waiting for it to find my face. Hello there, how do you do? Long time no see. I've not posted anything on my YouTube for a little while, but my intention is to post on here a little bit more frequently. But I guess one video a year is basically more frequently than I have been doing anyway. So maybe, I, hey, let's go for two a year and then go from there. So I'm very excited because look, this is the brand new OM1 Mark II by OM System. And I've been very lucky to have this camera the past few weeks, testing it out, see what I thought of it. And I must say, I'm rather impressed. So the OM1 is an incredible camera, but the Mark II has a couple of extra new features that I think take things to the next level. So in this video, I will run you through the experiences I've had while shooting with it, a couple of images, and um, yeah, just a nice little chat, really. Hang on, itchy eye. I'll just leave it there. I'm not doing it again. It's taken me like nine times to do this already. So I'm in the Scottish Highlands and things have been rather chilly. And I must say that these new rubber grips, I've been a godsend. Trying to adjust your camera settings with thick old gloves on in minus 11 can be tricky, but these little grips certainly make it a lot, lot easier. It's the little things like that, you know, you really gotta appreciate it. So yeah, without further ado, let's have a little look at some of my pictures. Why not? Yeah, let's talk about the graduated neutral density filter first because that's really cool. So the OM1 Mark II has got a built-in graduated neutral density filter and that blew my mind. I absolutely loved using it and I'm thinking forward uh, to when the insects wake up, I think it's going to be a really, really creative tool for my macro work. So I'm very excited to get cracking with that. So a couple of these next images I actually got in one day. It shows how versatile this gear is. So I started off photographing ducks, I went for a walk around the hills and stuff and then towards the end of the day, I caught the sunset at a beautiful loch. And I will say that the graduated ND filter really came into its own. You can actually change the angle of your grad filter too, in camera. I managed to shoot a half a second exposure handheld after dark. And I used the grad ND to darken down the sky retaining all the highlights and then that really made that reflection pop and you can see just on the edge of the horizon there there's this beautiful misty glow so i stopped the grad just above that because i didn't want to lose the highlights there so this picture kind of reminded me of a desert in a way the lock had frozen completely solid and it got covered in snow and people have been throwing rocks on top of it. So I used the grad filter again to balance up the sky, retaining all that snowy highlight. And I think it looked pretty cool. I don't shoot a lot of landscape photography, so I don't want to be carrying a ton of stuff with me, but I am interested in photographing scenery. I just picked up the eight to 25 lens um, for that reason. So I don't really need to invest or carry extra gadgets with me. I got the live ND filter built in, and now I have a grad filter built into my camera. So for this image, I used a 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro lens, and I put the camera on the ground, shot it wide open, focused on the hills in the distance with a grad filter to balance out the sky. And I just love how it's rendered the foreground completely out of focus, but we've got these rather nifty specular highlights that bring the picture to life. So those of you who have been kind enough to follow my work for a little while may know that I specialize in macro photography, but I love nature. I love photographing everything. If mother nature made it, I want to photograph it. So I've recently started including um, some bird photography into the mix, some wildlife, some landscapes. I'm really trying to get good at these things um, simply because I enjoy them. One of the reasons why I love OM system cameras is that they have so many features in there that as you start developing skills and interests and maybe you want to push your creative side as a photographer, then there's a lot of tools in here that allow you to explore. And I know that the bird detect is quite something. So we'll segue straight into bird detect. So I saw this beautiful bird sat up in the tree and the snow was very thick and I was struggling to get focus. So I enabled bird detect 
used every focus point, half clicked, and the camera just locked on and found it. So then I just had to take enough frames to try to time it so that you could see his eyes because the snow was falling quite heavily. Towards the end of the day, I was sat in the woods with my OM1 Mark II and my 300 F4. And it was pretty dark at this stage, so I wasn't really trying to take photographs, so I was just enjoying myself. And this Robin landed right next to me. Now, thankfully, the 300 F4 focuses really closely. And thankfully, the new stabilizer really makes a difference. So I managed to get this picture at 1600 ISO at a 20th of a second handheld. Now that's incredible when you consider that this is a field of view of 600 millimeters and it's really close up. Look how sharp it is. If we zoom in and you can see all the little feather detail, unreal. We've got a second surprise. Look, do, 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 do. this is a 150 to 600 millimeter lens. This has quite some reach. So the field of view on this lens is 1,200 millimeters. So on my first day with the lens, I took it out to one of the local locks to see if there was anything around to photograph and I was delighted to find some ducks. And I must say I was very grateful to have the versatility to be able to zoom in and out and change my compositions whenever maybe the subject got too close or if I wanted to include some of the scenery in there as well. Staying on the subject of bird detect, but 90 millimeter macro lens? Yeah, we'll talk about that. So after a few days with the OM1 Mark II, I decided to head out and get some macro shots with it. So I sat down for a moment, just looking around, and a robin landed right next to me. So I had my camera and my 90 millimeter macro on, and I started taking some shots of it. So as the Robbie got closer and closer, I realized I'm not gonna get any depth of field here. It's not bright enough to stop down to F11 and it's a macro lens, so there is no depth of field. I might as well just focus stack it and see what happens. So with the subject detect turned on, I used my AEL button here to switch on focus stacking. I had my camera set up for a 15 image focus stack and of course it did not work, the bird moved. But when I got home, I took another look at the files and it turns out that there was enough in there for me to get this picture. And if you look really closely, you can even see me reflected in its eye, it was that close. But what's more important than the photo is that I've got a memory of that moment and I'm able to share it with you now. We've got two methods of gaining depth of field. One is to focus stack in camera, and the other is to use in-camera focus bracketing. Focus bracketing, I would say, is a slightly more advanced technique in that we've got to do a lot of work in post-production. We have to blend the images ourselves, but in-camera focus stacking overcomes that because it allows you to shoot up to 15 images, but then it will automatically blend them together for you and give you a JPEG output. Now you still retain the raw files if you wanted to blend them yourself later, but it's really good to have that confirmation that the focus stack has worked before you leave the field. So these next two images are to illustrate to you the kind of results you can expect to get by using in-camera focus stacking. Now neither of these images have had in-camera post-production. They're taken at different distances, but both of them are shot at f8 using only in-camera focus stacking. So for this shot, 15 frames was not going to be enough. So with my camera mounted to a tripod, I bracketed 250 frames at f8 in order to get it sharp from front to back. And that's simply because the mushroom was small and I was very close up. These next two images are in-camera focus brackets using a flash and a diffuser 
and they're actually handheld. And there's a lot of frames here. We're talking 50, 60 frames with a differential set to one. I like to use a differential of one lately. I find that it gives the most accurate results, but it is a little bit more time consuming. Um, but we're macro photographers, we're patient folks. So high res mode is a very interesting feature. If we mount our cameras to a tripod, we can get 80 megapixel files. And that is an astonishing amount of detail, but we also have handheld high res mode which gives us 50 megapixels out of a tiny camera body like this. That's astonishing. But high res mode has been improved in the OM1 Mark II to give us 14 bit raw files. So that means a ton of extra colors that we can process. Check out this tiny mushroom. So this is a manual focus stack of four images using high res mode. But here's the thing, it's actually a crop from this picture. And the full res file is an astonishing 10,368 pixels on the long side. That's wild. So I hope this video helps. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I will see you soon. Bye. Why not? You got nothing to lose, have you? What are you gonna lose? A picture. Just take another one. <laughs>